Eleanor, do you want a pepper? Hi, welcome. You guys have convinced me that I need to do like a cooking show and it is like 10.40, 10.45-ish. Could be up at like six for work? Yeah, maybe. But we need to do a little bit of prep for our meal. And I could do this in the morning, but like I don't want to do this in the morning before work because I'm lazy. Peel off our onion there. So we're gonna be making chicken fajitas and some guacamole. I got my avocados in a bag so that they ripen a little bit faster because um, if you keep them in a bag, they'll ripen faster because as stuff, um, well, any fruit will, because um, they release ethylene gas as they ripen and if you trap the ethylene gas in there, they ripen a little bit faster. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down. We're gonna start by chopping our vegetables. I'm gonna do it the night before because this is the most tedious part of it. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop our onion up first. Um, this requires half an onion, which I'm pretty sure like all recipes always say like half an onion. And that's like the most ridiculous thing ever in the world because who the hell only has half an onion? You know, get it all diced up and throw it in our dish there. Just some nice chunks of onion to go with our chicken. I am going to be so tired tomorrow because I logically have been sitting on the couch for the past hour and a half watching YouTube shorts. I don't like that piece. Oh, that's good enough to chop up. Just going to break them apart so that they cook a little better. Yeah, like I said, like I swear, all the, uh, every recipe that you do, it's like half an onion. So you're either going to want to find a recipe that um, also requires half an onion or you're just going to want to double the recipe. And I typically double this recipe if I'm at my mom's because, I mean, I'm the oldest of five, you guys didn't know. So when I'm at my mom's, like, there's like plenty of us to eat it. But when it's just me, this makes food for like a week. And I don't, this is going to be the only meal I have to cook this week because I have so much leftovers. Because we had our Schweinhurst in sauerkraut, which is just pork sausage and sauerkraut today. So I have leftovers for that for tomorrow for work. Oh, that's a big piece. I want to cut that. There we go. And um, I have... Probably at least two bowls of potato soup in the fridge. And I still have some stuff I made on Friday night. So we got lots of options, which is more potatoes because I love potatoes. The other reason we're gonna prep this here tonight is because um, I like my chicken really seasoned. And the best way to season it is to let it marinate for a while. You obviously don't have to let it marinate. Um, you can cook it right away. But I do recommend letting your chicken marinate for like six to eight hours minimum. And I do have some lovely um, documents in the description with all of the written instructions for this. I don't like the middle part of the onion, so I gotta take that out. There we go. That, that was gross. I guess I'll cut you like this. Cutting onions is my least favorite thing in the world, I swear. 
Um, I'm using a white, I guess I didn't tell you this, but I'm using a white onion. You can use whatever onion you prefer. Um, sometimes I use green onions and just like top it with that, but I do like to cook it with onions. You can also use, um, red onions. I find red onions a little too strong, but I've also used like yellow onion before. Now that our onion is cut up, I'm going to wash my hands because I don't like onion juice all over them. And then next, we're going to do our bell peppers. I picked out a red and a yellow one. You can pick out whatever colors you want. I just like the colorful ones. When I make this at my mom's, I buy a pepper in each of the colors because I like how it looks. Um, you're going to want these like roughly about like a fourth of an inch, so roughly like that size. And I'm going to get it in the dish because I have a lot of onions. So I always just um, pre-cut everything because then when I get off work tomorrow, it's going to be so much quicker than me having to like sit here and get those seeds out of there. It's so much quicker than me having to prep them after I've been at work for like 10 hours. But like I said, you don't have to prep early. I also meant to read another, like pick up another book today. I picked up The Overnight Guest by Heather Gutenkopf. Which is fine. That's my first book for... It's actually going really well. I'm like 50% through. I picked it up for my first book for tbr -thon. But I was going to pick up my second book too since that's a physical one. And um, because I sat down on the couch for an hour and watched YouTube shorts, I did not pick it up. But I was going to pick up The Last Party by Claire McIntosh, which was a book of the month from um, November of 22. Clearly, I'm on top of everything. I'm also surprised Ellie hasn't shown up because peppers are um, Ellie's favorite snack. Eleanor, do you want a pepper? Because it's like... 11 o'clock. She's like sleeping on the couch. But I usually feed Eleanor a little bit of the pepper. I don't like this middle part of it. Fun fact, did you know that the, the red ones have more vitamin C and vitamin A than the green ones? wash the seeds out a little bit easier. Yeah, the green ones are the um, least vitamin C out of all of them. Um, and then yellow ones are like the second least and orange are like um, in half. and like tier, like the second highest and red have the most vitamin C and vitamin A. They're also all made from the same pepper plant. It's wholly dependent on how long you leave them on the plant. So, like, we grow peppers in my mom's garden every year. And um, usually my sister and I pick a few, like, right away because we're impatient and, like, love peppers. But if you let them on the vine long enough, they do start to turn red. So I usually leave a few on there. That's also part of the reason I pick the red ones when I make this because, you know, we need a lot of vitamins. Vitamin A is good for the eyes. Vitamin C is good for our health. I swear to God, I just heard somebody's doorbell ring. You guys better not touch my doorbell, I swear to God. I've been on a apartment building, we have doorbells. I've only ever had it ring once. 
I swear to God, if someone hits my doorbell this later at night, I'm going to murder you. Although, I would have to answer it because the last time someone rang my doorbell, they were asking me what kind of car I have. Because it was another resident in here and they hit someone's car in the parking lot. And um, I parked next to that person because that was the only spot available, so... That's why. Well, I guess there was another spot available, but I, um, it's like in the back lot. And, um, last time I walked back that way, there was like nails on the ground, so I don't want to park there. You know? I don't want my car to break. Okay, owner, since you didn't come get your pepper, I'm going to eat it. Smooth it all down. Make it fit. Oh, I broke this one. Oops. If I would have put a few in with the onions, stop. Just think smarter, not harder, Alexis. There we go. There we go. And then this is all prepped. I have to remember to throw that little way it's broke. Oh. Our next thing is going to be prepping our chicken, which is, you know, the next big part there. I use the same knife for everything because I don't like dishes. And I mean, like, who cares, you know? It's all going to fix on anyways. So I use chicken tenderloins for this typically. Um, they cook a little bit better. They cook faster anyways. But you can also use chicken breasts. But I'm just going to slice them so that the pieces are a little smaller. Oh, hey, girl. You heard the word chicken. Um, I'll get you a pepper once I'm not handling raw chicken, okay? I always... I always budget enough peppers for me and you to snack on some. Um, these pieces, I'm just kind of like cutting them however I want. I never really measure these, but roughly the width of the peppers. They're still slightly frozen. That's okay. I can still cut them. Sometimes they actually cut a little bit easier when they're frozen. And um, I get we're gonna roughly cut up like a pound of chicken. Um, it usually makes I usually eat between two and three fajitas when I eat this, and I usually get um three to four meals out of it. So that roughly will tell you how much this makes. Am I doing this dangerously? Maybe. But it's okay. If I injure myself, I live near a hospital. So for this part, I have a few more pieces to cut up. But we're getting a lot of chicken on our tray here. So I... Just drop them all in a gallon Ziploc bag. I suppose you could do this another way. I think the easiest way is to just drop them in a bag, but you do you, you know? Drop that piece. That's pretty good with already. I think I have a little over a pound here. I have like a, a pound and a quarter or something stupid. Okay, drop the rest of that into the bag. I want to wash our hands again. Okay, Emma, come here. I'll get you a pepper. Come here. Mmm. Pepper's. We are going to make our own fajita seasoning. You can buy this at the store, sure. Um, I don't like the store bought shit. 
Maybe that comes from my youngest brother is half Mexican. And so his grandma used to um, make stuff for us all the time. Also, um, I use no real measurement in paying attention. Um, in the Google Doc, I give you guys amounts. Um, pretty much I do one of each of my seasonings. Except for garlic, I do two. <clears throat> So I did two of garlic, a little, a little stiff in there. I did one of garlic, a little chunky there. Or I did two of garlic, one of onion, one of chili. This is paprika. Again, my measurements are very exact. And then we're gonna do one of, cumin and you add more spices as you need to fully coat your chicken there's no real measurements around here that's rule number one of me cooking I don't do real measurements also got a fresh bottle of olive oil you can do this with water so I didn't include this in there I just like to add just a little bit of olive oil for um, some mm -hmm. moisture to help mix and then I already threw the cutting board in the sink. So we'll put on a new knife here. Um, we are gonna add some fresh lemon juice. I'll clean the counter, don't you guys worry. But I like fresh lemon juice in mine. So I have two lemons here. I'm personally going to do both lemons. This is usually when I make it at my mom's house that I get my stepdad because he's really good at squeezing these. Half a lemon dough. I also like this this lemon squeezer because then the seeds don't get in the way. I used to squeeze these by hands, but then I bought a lemon squeezer and it makes your life so much easier. I dropped the lemon, guys. Okay. Oops. I spilled some of that. We'll just dump it in there. A little extra chili never hurt anything. No worries. Like I said, I will clean my counter. Don't you guys worry. It usually gets a little messy when I'm doing this anyways because of my exact measuring skills. Like I just demonstrated. My exact measuring skills are for losers, okay? Who exactly measures anything, you know? Just estimate everything. And like I said, you can use um like free squeeze lemons, like the lemon juice things you can buy. But I like fresh. Okay, we're gonna squeeze some of the air out. And we're gonna seal that up. And then we're just gonna do some of this. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until my chicken is fully coated. So our chicken's pretty coated in there, and I think it, I have quite a bit of seasoning. You know, I have enough in there. So I'm gonna clean up this, but I gotta match everything back to their lids. Okay, that pretty much encompasses what we're gonna prep here tonight. 
We're just going to throw our chicken and our veggies in the fridge. And we're just going to let this marinate in this lovely mixture of spices until I get off work at um, 6, 5.30, 6, 6.30, something like that. I mean, like I said, it's like 11 p.m. now, so we're just going to let it sit like that for a while. But I will give you a quick recap since I'm chaotic as usual in the kitchen. Um, step one, I like to cut pre-cut my veggies. It makes dinner prep the next night go a lot faster if you just pre-cut your onion and your peppers. Does not matter what onion you use. You literally like how kind of onions you like to eat. Peppers, your choice of peppers. I like to use the colorful ones. I think it makes the food more exciting. You're gonna wanna cut those into like roughly a fourth of an inch. And then you're gonna wanna cut your chicken into like one fourth inch strips. And then you're gonna mix garlic powder, onion powder, ground cumin, chili powder, and paprika. All of them are one tablespoon, minus the garlic powder, I do double. I like a lot of garlic in my food though. Then we're gonna squeeze the juice of two lemons in it, and we're just gonna mix it together. Great summary, great summary. We'll make the guacamole when the chicken is cooking tomorrow, but as I said, I'm pre-prepping this, so when I get home work tomorrow, all I have to do is dump this. I'm gonna make it in the air fryer. And in, in the, the Google Doc, I have different options for making it in the stove or in the oven or on the stove. Ugh, I can talk. I know what I'm doing, guys. But um, I'm going to make it in my air fryer. So I'll just dump all of my chicken in my air fryer, dump in all of my vegetables with it. And while that's cooking, we'll make the guacamole. So it'll be perfect. All right, we're back. So the next night. I got off work probably like an hour ago, but I had to walk Ellie and then take a shower. So I'm going to be cooking it in the air fryer. So um, if your air fryer needs to preheat, I recommend doing that. I got a new air fryer, so I'm trying to remember what it wants me to do. My stepdad just decided to buy me a new one, and this is much fancier than the $20 one that I had. It has like a touch screen. Start. So it has to preheat, because it's fancy like that apparently. So we're gonna start with our guacamole. And if my phone goes off while I'm filming on it, it's just my friend because she's getting married this year. And logically I'm in the wedding because she only has two friends, me and her sister. So I just cut my avocados in half and then I just use a spoon and I scoop it out like that. But then I'm going to take that little part out. There we go. Um, I use three avocados. Because I like guacamole a lot. Come here. There we go. Get that out. Oh, it's okay. Scoop. But then, we are talking right now. She gave me wedding dates, but I told her, like, you need to finalize your bachelorette dates because apparently bachelorette trips are now several day events, which is awful for me because I do not like hanging out near people that long because that's very exhausting. But she doesn't have dates for that, so I'm going to have to bug her sister. But... She asked me if I'd be willing to get my nails done for the wedding, which is an absolute hard no. Oh, gosh, I am struggling with the pits tonight. Oh, just throw that in there. Got that all over my hand. That's okay. We own a sink. We'll be fine. But she asked me if I'd be willing to get my nails done. And it's an absolute hard no. Because I can't stand the feeling of nails. Like. I can't stand like. 
oh, that just like disgusts me that people can do that with their nails. That's a gross feeling. Um, so it's a hard no. I will not get my nails done for your wedding. I don't care. Um, and then she goes, will you paint them? And I can't stand the feeling of nail polish either. It's just that sensory processing disorder with the autism. I don't know if people really know that about me. I don't talk about it too much. But I have autism that went undiagnosed until I was in college. And then a professor noticed it. I'm so glad you're ready to add food. I'm glad food. I'm telling you, this air fryer is too fancy for me. Like, I don't know what my stepdad was thinking. I didn't add food. Don't start yet. So what we're going to do, we're going to get that in view. Move to the side, avocados. I'm just going to dump everything. See, this is why we prep. So we can just do that. And then we'll add the chicken. There we go. Now there's just some, like, of our lovely seasoning in there. Now I'm just going to separate it a little bit. So it's not all in a big blob. I'm going to cook it for um, roughly nine minutes to start with. And we're going to ro like rotate some chicken around in here after halfway. And we'll go back to our avocados. What was I saying? Oh, I don't talk too much about being diagnosed with autism. It was something I was diagnosed with in college. I should not use a knife to do this. As much luck as I am having, I should not use a knife. Come here. What are you doing? Give it back. There we go. Um, so when I was in college, a professor recommended I get diagnosed with it. And I went because it was free. What do you know? I am autistic. I'm just high functioning. Which wasn't that big of a shocker to them apparently because I do have ADHD. And there's a high correlation between girls and autism apparently. Okay, now that we got all of our avocados, we're just going to add seasoning. Like you, like I said before, I have no measuring skills. So I just dump stuff in. And we're dumping in onion powder, garlic powder, and ground cumin. Except for my ground cumin doesn't want to come out. Again, no measuring skills here. And then we're going to take our spoon and we're just going to smash everything. You can use a potato smasher if you have one. I don't own one because I don't smash potatoes. If I'm going to smash potatoes, I do that at my mom's house. Usually I just dice all of my potatoes. And also, I'm super professional about everything. What was I saying, though? Oh, yeah, I do have ADHD, and I knew that for a while. Like, they've known that since I was, oh, I don't know, second, first or second grade, I think. And I was medicated for that for a long time. I think I've probably been on, like, every single ADHD med out there. Some of them I just have horrible side effects with. Like, I wouldn't eat because it suppressed my appetite so much that if I forced myself to eat... I would get sick. So I just want to eat. And losing 40 pounds in nine weeks is not good. So they would take me off it. Other ones, I wouldn't sleep. Like I would sleep for like two hours a night, which also is not good for you. I'm gonna mix up some of the chunkier parts. 
um, smash this as smushy as you like your uh, uh, guacamole. If you like chunky guacamole, don't smash as much. I like um, kind of a mix where there's some chunks, but not too many. And you can use this as a topping, or you can use it as a dip for chips, which is what I usually do. Next, we're going to add some limes. All good guacamoles have limes. I'm going to injure myself, I swear to God. Oh, I did it. Got my, my handy dandy squeezer. You know, there's different lemon and lime squeezers, which I don't understand why. Because all the really the big difference is, is that the lime one is smaller. But I can still squeeze limes out of this one. So I use two limes. Three avocados, three limes. This is going to beep at me. Well, it might not beep at me. Open. It's time to toss our chicken. Ooh, look at that. That's a little bit of an avocado. Slide off to the side. And like I said, we're just gonna toss it a little bit. So that our chicken cooks a little more thoroughly. If you're doing this in the oven, you're also going to want to... I guess I didn't tell you guys. I put it at 400 degrees for like 9 minutes. I don't think I said anything. I don't know. And I kind of just estimate the time, you know? Just estimate it. What sounds like a good time? You know, you just want your chicken cooked. Oh my gosh. Why do these limes not want to stab today? Cut open. I'm probably using the, I mean, I know I'm using the wrong knife. But like, I don't want to get another knife out. Just cut. So the lime juice, one, is good for taste. Two, lime juice is good for making sure it doesn't turn um, brown. You know how guacamole turns brown? It's from oxidization. So if you just squeeze, oh, I dropped a little bit of lime in there. If you just squeeze some lemon juice on it before you store it, it will help improve it from turning brown. You just want to put like a whole layer of lime juice on top. Um, you can do fresh limes or you can just do like lime juice out of one of those things. You know, the little, the little bottles. I have one because that's what I do. I have one of these things. That's, that's what I top it with when I'm putting it away because that's the easiest way. Um, and then we're going to taste test it to make sure it's good. See if we need to add anything. This is how this is how all cooks should just test it. Mm. Needs more. This is how you know if you have enough seasoning in it. Um, you can also put cilantro in this if you want. I know some people don't like cilantro. I don't know. Cilantro is a weird thing for me. Where, because I know like Chipotle puts it in their, their rice. Sometimes I can taste this, like the, the cilantro, where like it tastes like soap, you know? So sometimes I can like taste that. 
and other times I can't. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. We're getting closer. Again, this depends on how much seasoning you like on stuff. So it's like I marinated my chicken for like 18 hours. Because I like the flavoring to really stick in it. But some people don't like that, you know? You do you. That's the key for all good cooking. You do you. I also really like guacamole, so that's why I make so much of it. So there's enough ground cumin in there now. I can taste that. But we're going to keep adding some more garlic and onion. You can also put onions in this if you want. I do that sometimes. Like, I wouldn't put half an onion in this. Like, you know, because you only need like half an onion for the fetus. I wouldn't put half an onion in that. Thank you for being done. This is like how chaotic cooking goes every night here. Yep. Mm. We're there now. How much of that did I put in here? Who knows? Measuring skills are not my forte. No, this has been in here for a little bit. You guys can see it a little bit there. I'm going to check if the chicken is done. And I have a real professional way of checking that. Let me get rid of my lines. Open trash can. What are you doing? Oh, I should probably take trash out. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. We'll need that one. Here's how I check chicken. I just take a piece. Oh, well, that's two, but that's okay. And I chop it. Mm, it's pretty cooked after like nine minutes. Got a little bit of seasoning on my hand there. It's pretty much there, but you know, we ain't about salmonella here. So I'm just gonna like toss it and I'm just gonna cook it just for like I'm probably just going to put it in for like another two to three. You are not preheating. Do not lie. You did not pull off that quickly. Okay. We will semi clean up our mess. Hello, Eleanor. Say hello. So you can smell chicken and you like chicken. Now, if you're a normal person, what you're going to do is put some guacamole like on your plate with some chips. Not me. I'm going to take the whole bag of chips back to the eat with me. You can also um, heat your tortillas up a little bit. I don't tend to heat, heat my tortillas up. Not unless I have fresh ones, which I do not have fresh ones. I have it for a while because I don't know how to make fresh ones. Like, I've never made them. But my brother's grandma is from Mexico. And she used to make them for me. But then she got put into a nursing home. And obviously couldn't cook there. She needed to be in a nursing home. She fell like five times. After the fifth time she fell... Her kids were finally like, yeah, mom, you should probably go into the nursing home, right? You think? You think she should? Just gonna grab some toppings out from the fridge. I, oh, I got lots of fur on me. Look at that, owner. You got fur all over my shirt again. Um, I like to put cheese on my fajitas. 
I just have mild cheddar here because my only other cheese I have in the fridge is mozzarella. And I don't feel like mozzarella is like a vibe, you know? And then I have some, a little bit of spring mix left. I always put my spring mix in a bag with a paper towel because the paper towel, you can see it's damp in there. And what I do is like every day to every other day, I just take the paper towel out and I get rid of it. But if you keep a paper towel in with your your salad greens, like your lettuce and whatnot, it helps soak up the moisture so that your, um, your salad doesn't get that wet, gross texture as quickly. You know, it makes it last a little bit. So I can buy like bigger containers of it at a time. Like this came out of um, like a container like this big. Okay, it says it's preheating, but I really can't see that it's preheating this long, you know? Like, how's the chicken looking now? Oh, we can put it on a... Uh, who cares? Here's a different piece of chicken. Chop. Chop. Mm, maybe a smidgy pink kit in the middle of that one. Fill it up, I got a little bit better right now. Keep preheating. Just smear that seasoning on your taco shell. Well, while I'm waiting, I guess I will prepare. I like a little bit of salad greens in my fajitas. Just a little bit. No, just add some more, you know veggies too, but you know, get that veggie intake in. Because we're supposed to consume like five to six servings of vegetables a day. Did you know that? Most people in the United States do not. Not that I put like a ton in there, but you know, it's something. And see, this is where I get in trouble with the guacamole because I just like how it tastes. Mmm. Delicious. I'll put this in a different bowl. I won't keep it in this bowl. I recommend storing it in like a glass bowl. Like the smallest one you can get it all into. And then you're just going to take a little bit of your lime juice. Or like, see a sprinkle it on the top. That's not open yet though. That's a new bottle. And we're just going to sit here and wait till it's done. Aren't we, Elnor? We just gotta have to wait. I have had a migraine this afternoon and I knew I was gonna get one. I could just, you know, sense it. I'm gonna use my, get some ice here. I don't wanna add food already in there. So this is a, a countertop ice maker. You guys can't see it. That's done. It's done, guys. On fuck. Okay. So I like to put... You know, you put it over how much you want it. I'm really a bad judge of how much chicken to put in stuff, or like how much toppings in general to put in stuff. So I always overstuff mine like a logical person will. But I like to make sure you know there's a few peppers and at least two pieces of chicken in each of them. That has two baby pieces. You know, let's find another baby piece. There we go. Just to make sure we're all enough in there. Ooh, and then we need to make sure we have some onions. I know there's peppers, but I gotta grab a few onions to put in them. You can marinate your um, vegetables too. I, I don't tend to because like, as you can see, they're pretty seasoned just cooking with the with the seasoning stuff <gasps> okay ta-da that's all you gotta do you know and then you just put your leftovers away like a normal person so 
cheese. All right. That's all I got for today, but I'll let you guys help me pick. I could, in the next one, I could do potato soup, because I have potatoes. Or I could do um, a pot roast. Or I could do like a cube steak. It's probably gonna be the options. I'll put them up on screen so you can see them again. But yeah, that's all I have for this time. So there's going to be no schedule for these. These are just going to be whatever I make something new that you guys haven't seen before. Mm. That one had a lot of garlic in it. Perfect. All right. Go ahead and leave in the comments which option I should make next. Potato soup, pot roast, cube steak. Just let me know.